my pleasure and privilege to uh, introduce our newest addition to the Spider Athletics, our new head coach of the women's basketball program, Aaron Russell. Aaron joins us after seven successful seasons at uh, Bucknell University, and prior to that was the head coach at the uh, University of Chicago. Uh, obviously, this is a little bit different than your typical uh, press conference uh, introduction of a new head coach and that uh, this is the second one I've done with this guy right here. <laughs> so uh, I think that in, in large measure speaks volumes to uh, the respect I have and uh, admiration for the skill set and uh, success level that Coach Russell has been able to achieve uh, leading uh, a couple of basketball programs with some pretty lofty academic standards and I think he's just the, the coach to help return uh, spider basketball to the top of the A-10. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Aaron Russell. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. And uh, want to thank John. I uh, want to thank Laurie and the rest of the committee. Uh, this, was, uh, this was an awesome process. It was a tough process. Um, I also want to thank our administration uh, at Bucknell uh, and what they did for us in our program over the last seven years, which I guess you're in both of those categories, the administration here and administration of Bucknell. Uh, and then I want to thank my family. Uh, my family and, and, and some of the staff are here, uh, been vital to our success, my success uh, over the last few years, uh, especially the, the last seven at Bucknell. Um, and then I want to thank our players. I, I want to thank our players uh, at Bucknell. I want to thank our players at University of Chicago. This has been an awesome ride. The, the last 15 years for me, uh, being able to kind of be a part of two special programs and, and kind of propelling and catapulting us into, into a third here. Um, and then lastly, I want to thank our current players. Some of them are here today. Uh, last night was awesome. Uh, the, energize, the energy there, uh, how they energized me, um, really just solidified our decision. Uh, watching them interact with my family and with my kids, um, you can imagine, as, as a parent, as a dad, you're nervous about a move like this and what it means for your family. And, and the most absolutely welcoming crew uh, that you could ever imagine last night uh, really has me really jacked up to, to get this thing rolling here at, at Richmond. Uh, John O'Connor. Hi, the, John. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see um, you. Can you assess the heart factor and, and how much that was at play when you determined this was a good job? It, it was a factor, no doubt. And I think you look at the institutions, there was other factors. There was the, the academic fit, you know, it was something, the, the level of basketball, the location, all of those were factors. But I'll be honest with you, it, it was it was going to take a lot for us to leave uh, what we had at Bucknell. And, and even some other opportunities out there, there, there's just always kind of that unknown. And and this felt right. Um, a lot of it had to do with, with John and, and my relationship. And that's why it was easy to, to say yes here. You know, you ask your players all the time to get out of your comfort zone. And to grow, you kind of have to get out of your comfort zone. That was going to be hard for us because of what we had at, at Bucknell. I felt we got out of our comfort zone with this, but having John here, uh, the comfort, and having some other familiar faces down here too helped. I think this just felt right, and maybe it wasn't as much of a leap of faith to, to get out of your comfort zone to, to come here. Coach, how much uh, have you been able to be in touch with potential recruits that were interested before? We've got a couple of local girls that were potentially coming here. How much have you been able to kind of reach out to those? Yeah, guys? I think that they were uh, they were some of my first phone calls. You know, obviously when, when you come into a situation and you see the, the players that were here, you want to get to know them, you want to build that relationship. And, and the uncomfort for me, or the discomfort for me right now is because you don't know those guys. You know, you want to coach them the way you want to coach them. You don't quite know them or have built that relationship. The incoming kids, I mean, again, had seen them play, knew they were very special players. So that was a priority. Uh, there was a lot of priorities, but that was a priority. And I do feel comfortable with that. I feel like we're kind of off on, on the right foot here. And I think one of the great things about a school like this and a program like this is you don't just come here for the coach. You also don't just come here for the basketball, quite honest. You know, and I think that was something for us as a family is there's a lot of other things besides the basketball component. And I think I recognized that very quickly with those guys is their, their rationale for coming here was the right reason. You know, they're well-rounded student athletes that uh, are still very eager and excited to come to, come to Richmond. Hey Aaron, could you speak to your uh, offensive style? Obviously, scoring was a was a problem here uh, last year. Uh, yeah, and, and obviously, you, you watched some film, and you know, it, it was an explosive offense last year. I think that's something that uh, you didn't have to look too far and didn't have to go too much of a deep dive into the numbers for that. You know, I think we're a style that we've coached a lot of different ways. You know, kind of our early years at Bucknell, maybe we didn't have that same firepower and maybe a little bit more toughness, defensive oriented. 
I think we're still able to run the same style. Um, and then you look at what we were able to do the last few years, you know, and as they got comfortable within that offense and scoring, you know, almost mid seventies a game. It was a very, very explosive offense, and we were in the top ten in the country in three point percentage. And part of that had to do with we had two All Conference first team post players. So you kind of look at what we have here. I think maybe we can tweak some things, and I think that was kind of my first initial thing watching us is, do we need to change what we're doing? You know, and I think we'll tweak some things. But my ideal offense is, um, and I've said this for the last few years. Even going to Chicago, we we were kind of playing this positionless basketball, this European model before it became popular, um, and I think that's something that we want to emulate here. You know, it, it's I think to the to the outside eye, it's a lot of four out one in motion. You know, and kind of those those concepts. I think ours is different in the sense that everybody's going to kind of play every position. We're not just posting up our fours and fives. You know, we really don't use positions or numbers, any of that stuff. So I think when we're recruiting, we kind of want those versatile student athletes that can play a multitude of positions, hopefully guard a few people too, uh, but they can play uh, all over the place. And I think when we've been very good, it's been because we've had scoring all over the place. We've been able to space the floor. And I'll tell you what, it's an exciting brand to, to watch. I think that's important, um, but it's also a fun system and style to play in. You mentioned just how hard it can be to leave, leave places. Were you necessarily looking, or was just that perfect opportunity that showed up at a time you didn't really yeah, expect? We really, we really weren't. Um, we weren't looking. I mean, again, it, you're not naive. You know, when you have success and have the level of success that we had, you kind of expected, you know, a few phone. And so we we entertained a couple things, um, but I think that's what really the, the John Hart factor, like you mentioned there earlier, was. That was a reason to to come here and pursue this one. You know, it would have been very easy to stay, maybe even look at a few other places, but but John being here was a factor and a reason that we kind of focused on this one. You mentioned those other outside factors too, besides just the success on the court that, you know, makes a job like this so yeah. special and intriguing for you. Yeah, and, and my wife had some familiarity with this area. You know, when we met, she was actually a director of operations at VCU. So my familiarity with this uh, was coming down and visiting her. Um, our family situation is different right now. When she was down here the first time, it wasn't with a wife or with a husband and three kids. So this will be a different experience for her. But again, he, he looked at the level of comfort that we had here. Um, I appreciate my uh, our pastor in Lewisburg being here today. You know, just kind of a, on a, a, a weird side note, he left uh, our, our church in Lewisburg a year ago uh, and, and took over a church here in Midlothian. So if you just look at all those different things kind of factoring in and uh, in a lot of ways just felt like it really kind of let us down here. John, what is it about Aaron and, and this school that lets you know that this is the right decision for everybody? Well, I, first comment, I, I think it's less the John Hart factor and more the Aaron Russell factor that led uh, Aaron to the Richmond uh, Spiders. And it's because of the elements that are in place here at Richmond. Um, it's a high academic institution. Uh, Aaron's got a deep commitment to the scholar-athlete model, has his entire professional career. So I think that resonated with uh, him from the get-go. His um, style of play translates really well to, um, I think, winning basketball, certainly at the Patriot League, uh, as evidenced by his championships and trips to the postseason. I think it translates directly to the A-10 and will be a successful brand of basketball here as well. Um, but then I, I, I'd known uh, and worked with Aaron for, uh, you know, almost seven years. And, uh, you know, for all the same reasons that I thought this is a great opportunity, I think they all translate in their own way to uh, Coach Russell thinking this is a great opportunity. So even though I wasn't sure when we started the search that Aaron had uh, interest or was ready to move, uh, knowing his commitments to the community, he's very involved. Also knowing that he's got three young children who are attached to uh, <laughs> friends and family in the area. Um, it certainly wasn't uh, a foregone conclusion, but I was really pleased uh, when word came in that he was interested. And at that point, I turned to the rest of the folks involved in our selection process and said, well, uh, Aaron Russell sets, sets the standard. If we can find another candidate that uh, is elevated beyond that standard, then we're going to have a heck of a coach. But I know that Aaron's talents and his skill set, his abilities, will be successful at the University of Richmond. Uh, Aaron, what's your familiarity with uh, the rest of the A-10? Have you played any of them the last couple of years? And and not that you don't have a lot of time to watch other right. conferences, but what is your familiarity with the rest yeah, of them? I mean, again, you know, us being in the Patriot League and trying to kind of recruit a level up, obviously you're going against a lot of A-10 opponents. You kind of had to get to know the league because you were 
if you were doing it right, you were going to recruit against the A10 kids, A10 schools for players. You were going to recruit against the Big East, and so I think you become familiar with that. You know, our scheduling at Bucknell got really hard over the last few years, to be honest with you. Um, so we were able to to play against some of the A10 opponents here the last few years. We played Fordham in the last few years. UMass this past season, St. Bonaventure's been on the schedule for a while. So it's a league because it's in similar in some ways to the Patriot League that. You know, a lot of peer institutions, so I think we always had our eye on it. Um, but, again, I think you get to know people, and, and the big part of it just through recruiting. Paul, on that recruiting aspect, you've obviously built connections in different places that yeah. you've been. What is your kind of routine for that? Is it you looking nationwide, focusing here first, spreading out? Yeah, I think focusing here first. You know, I think this is an area that my staff and I have always had familiarity with, and there's a, an area that's rich with talent. So I think you kind of have to start here. You kind of have to know your backyard. I think for a lot of reasons, you know, the, the University of Richmond has a great, great reputation in this area. So even when we were trying to recruit in this area, this was a hard market to kind of get that top-level kid. So I think we want to take advantage of, of what the school has to offer and, and hopefully kind of build up that basketball reputation but I think there's a national reputation this place has and maybe even can be enhanced a little bit. So I don't want to tell people no. I mean, even meeting some of the men's players yesterday from the Midwest, like, oh, yeah, maybe we can hit that Midwest where maybe we didn't think about that before. But I think you look at the south, you look at the eastern seaboard, like you know, kind of the area that we've recruited at, at Bucknell, this is a place that still resonates with them. And, you know, I think when we were at Bucknell, we were always trying to get, like I said, that level of above. You know, and so I think it's a little bit here that we can kind of, kind of still get that similar player, but maybe we can kind of dip into those ACC waters, maybe the Big Ten waters, and try to get those players that basketball-wise are maybe a level above us, but the academics and everything else that Richmond can offer maybe gets your foot in the door and, and resonates with them and, and hopefully eventually gets them to matriculate here. What's the last just kind of week plus been like for you since you were announced? <laughs> oh, Obviously, yeah. I know you, you're on the this, road. Uh, <laughs> the fact that this has only been a week is mind blowing to me. I, I'm not one that sleeps a lot anyway, and this is uh, this is the most functional I've been on the least amount of sleep I've, I've ever had. It's it's funny because you look at it and you're like, oh wow, we have accomplished a few things, and because you look at the other side of it, man, there's a lot to be done. I w you wish for more hours in the day, and a little bit, you know, the, the first part of it, it was important to me to make sure that Bucknell was set up going forward too. This was not a wipe your hands clean and move forward. You know, I think you owe an obligation to those student athletes there. You still love those student athletes. You want them to be in a good spot. So we kind of had to close some things there to make sure that was in a good spot. Now, you know, again, as you're doing that, you're, you're trying to get all these things in order uh, here here with the with the spider program. And now again, I, I think our attention is fully focused on this, you know, and this is I don't know if there's going to be any more sleep coming over the next few weeks, um, but at least now we can kind of focus on this recruiting weekends coming up. And, you know, again, I think this is a popular place and should be even more of a popular place with some key recruits. And thankful that you've built some relationships over the last few years out here, and hopefully that translates into some exciting basketball coming up.